going good evening. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening song is For the Healing of the Nations. Some of you may recognize the melody as a country ergo sacramento. Let's sing all four verses for the healing of the nations, 712.
You also must be prepared, for in an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. And Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us, for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the Master will put in charge of all his servants, to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant, whom his Master, on arrival, finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the Master will put that servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, then begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants, to eat and drink and get drunk, then the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour, and he will punish that servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant knew his master's will, but did not make preparations or act in accord in his will, shall be beaten severely. The servant was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only like him. Much will be required of a person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of those entrusted with much. Gospel of the Lord. Earlier this week, I was driving back to Seymour from Owensboro, Kentucky. I was you know, trying to find a radio station here, you know, kind of out in the middle of nowhere sometimes, driving to those places, do the scan and trying to figure that I do not have serious, so I have to scan what's on there. And I kid you not, it landed on the station with a strong signal, and it was playing Christmas music. <laughs> I kid you not, I kid you not, there was a Christmas song on there. And after it ended, though, the fellow, the disc jockey, the guy who showed us, said, I just wanted to make you feel cooler. You know, so I thought, well, you know, kind of did, because there's something about whether it's jingle bells or death balls, kind of puts us in a different different mood. And I thought, as hot as it's been, it's okay to feel cooler. And then I, th I started thinking about Christmas songs, and you know that, that one, there's no place like home for the holidays. If you're old, you probably remember it. If you're young, you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's kind of a standard. There's no place like home for the holidays. And we kind of thought about Homes and finding a homeland in our readings today. That first reading from wisdom about you know the Exodus, the, the people, the people of Israel being set free and going out to find their home. And that second reading with Abraham going off to find a home that God has provided for His people. And even Jesus talking about taking care of what we have, the home that we have now, and the home that is to come. There really, you know, there really is no place like home. And whether it's here in this life or the ones God's calling us to, there's something peaceful, there's something secure, there's something good about being home. School started for some people last week. It starts here in our community this week. And so everybody's doing their preparations. I know the teachers have been in the classrooms this week and kind of getting things ready. We have a day, a Monday, Tuesday this week to kind of start preparing for things. So there's all kinds of preparation that goes into that, whether you're a parent getting kids ready, kids getting ready, or educators getting ready. There's all kinds of that stuff that we need to be getting ready to prepare for. We're starting religious ed signs back that registration start this weekend for our religious set program that starts in September. Um, so and there's preparation and, and, and things to get ready for that. There's a lot of things we do in life that if we're going to do them well, we have to get ready for them. We have to prepare for them. And uh, we have to be alert at what we're about. And that's kind of the theme of the gospel today, is how prepared are we as adopted sons and daughters children of God, how prepared are we 
in our faith? Do we take it for granted? Do we think an hour on Sunday checks off the box and that's all we need to do? Or do we really pay attention to what God has done in our lives and we, we prepare ourselves every day to be a child of God in our prayer, what we're doing, and how we teach the words we say, the disposition we give to people. That's all part of preparing us for what is to come. We can get lazy with it, you know, the servants in the gospel today. The master's not here yet, so I'm not going to pay any attention. When he comes, I'll be ready. But we don't know when he's coming. That's the whole point. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. And if we get sloppy and lazy, he's going to come when we least expect it. And we're not going to be ready. We're not going to be ready for the Lord. And it doesn't take a whole lot to stay ready. How faithful are we in daily prayer? Do we pray every day? It's part of how we stay ready. Are we kind to people? Do we really put charity and kindness at the top of the list and how we relate to people? It's part of being ready. Do I give myself out to others when, they, when there's a need? Am I willing to do that? Or do I just stay to myself? Like the servant who's not ready for gospel today. There's all kinds of things we're called to do to stay ready. To stay prepared for the Lord. He's in our midst and who will come. And you know, that's, that's the challenge of discipleship. That's, that's the challenge of, of being a child of God. It's how ready are we? How much time, how much time do we put in our relationship with God? Do we put more time on Facebook? Do we put more time Googling? Do we put more time watching TV than we do in our faith? Jesus has given us a warning to but it's not a warning to scare us. It's a warning so that we are alert to what it takes to be a child of God. God is offering us an inheritance, not of money and of gold and riches. He's offering us the inheritance of life after death, of heaven. He's offering that to us. We just have to stay awake and ready for it. He's offering us a home, a home in heaven. And we're not going to get it just because he offers it to us. We're going to get it because we accept the offer. And accepting the offer means we live as the chosen people. We live as the people he has called us all. We live by being ready. Yeah. 
it is as God's chosen people, as his children, that we can turn to him now and lift up these prayers. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Thompson, and all leaders of the church, may God's precious gifts always be in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless you now and forever. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless you now and forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept this offering of your church, for in your mercy you have given these gifts to be offered. By your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through this Paschal mystery, Jesus accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. Summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priest, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you've called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. So now let the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join the end of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
locally prayed on the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Therese, St. Ambrose, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
for our community procession. Let's see at that first Eucharist, unit number 840 in the Gather of the
Jesus, you are the high priest. Thank you for giving us your saving body and blood in the Eucharist. Please come. Amen. While we wait for our home, we wait praying for peace. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering from Ukraine, and that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for our world leaders, for compassion, strength, and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our brothers and sisters in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Again. May this communion in your sacrament that we've been fed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. As I mentioned, religious ed sign-ups are going on for religious ed, youth ministry, confirmation. Also, another uh, season of the RCI will be beginning in September, so if you know someone who might be interested in knowing more about the faith or joining the faith, um, I would call the office. We had classes in Spanish and in English for that. So maybe you should just call the office with that, that information. And also, well, the Sisters of Notre Dame are going to be here next week. So it's one of the Mission of Pio. So they will be here, and there will be a second collection after this next week. Any birthdays? Oh, oh she's, she's ready. <laughs> Got nothing yet? Obviously. The girls. Okay. We ask you, Almighty God, to bless these your daughters. Send your angels to keep watch over them. May they continue to grow in wisdom and strength. May they know of your love for them always. That you bless them. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Please do not. Our closing song is a living faith. 